Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I've already started making storm preparations. We live in the Gulf Coast of Florida, and as you know, we are notorious for getting hurricanes, and we are right in, I'd say the middle of hurricane season. It goes from June to November. As a flower farmer, that is the news that you don't wanna receive is, hey, you've got a storm headed your way. But unfortunately, there is a tropical depression. They've already named it Fred. It is still down by Cuba, but the projected path is bringing it right on top of us. And it always strengthens when it gets over the warm Gulf waters. So what do I do as a flower farmer to prepare for something like this so it doesn't totally take out my crop? Because right now it's the middle of August and I'm starting fall flowers. I still have swarm season growing for my bouquet subscriptions. So I've got to take measures to save what I can. So I'm gonna take you along today and show you. I've already started. You can see I'm already sweaty. I'm gonna take you in the garden and show you what we do to prep for a hurricane. So as far as the flower studio goes, there are a lot of projectiles in here that if a, if a really strong wind came through that could be quite dangerous or uh, let's just say messy. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this pole barn slash flower studio is where we hold our bouquet classes and where we have our markets on Saturdays and we set up uh, all the flowers in here, but also keep my vases, just you know, empty vessels and stuff in here part decoration, part usefulness, but I'll probably have to cover this whole area either with a tarp or take it all down because it is three-sided. So it is open across the front. And yesterday, um, just with that little, you know, strong thunderstorm that we had, it was a mess in here. It blew stuff all around. Didn't uh, mess with any of the glass, but I'm growing a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of fall seedlings um, started out here and my grow light set up. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I probably fold the chairs up and, and just kind of at least move stuff, stuff away from the opening. And right now, I'm, of course you can see I'm drying flowers that would blow everywhere. Right now it's kind of off, uh, off month for us for August. So the cooler is empty. So I may just move a lot of stuff into the cooler room. It's shut off right now. And I could just use it for storage, just a little added protection. So right off the bat, I walk into the garden and this area is the most vulnerable for winds. Winds always come up over that hill and we get really strong winds that blow laterally or sometimes they'll go right down the row. Yesterday was a really good example. We had a little microburst pop up. We had some 60 mile an hour gusts and you can see it laid down quite a bit of flowers, even with the Horta Nova netting. Let me see if I can get a little closer for you to see. I've got netting on everything, but still, um, it is no uh, force against strong, strong winds, especially when you've got tall varieties like these zinnias. They literally just laid over like somebody just came through with a board and knocked them down. And I've already, and it did the straw flowers right here the same way because they're tall. So I've already lifted up the Hortanova netting. So, um, I've got my poles in place and they've got different notches. So I've lifted it up and I've walked through and I've picked up the netting to be a little taller in places. So at least we'll try to give it some top support because these plants are top heavy. I will probably trim down some of these because these are growing for fall. So I haven't trimmed the central stem on a lot of these yet, which causes them to branch up from the bottom. So I may go ahead and just trim them down. That way, at least they won't break off or, uh, you know, break off down at the root system. So I'll probably trim some of the tall um, straw flowers off that I haven't already that hasn't begun branching yet. Now with the uh, snapdragons, I mentioned in a previous video, these are cool season. So these are done anyway for, for uh, the summer. So I'm going to come through here, cut those way down and lower the net. So um, not too concerned about those. But the zinnias, now these are the crop that I'm cutting off of right now. And I think I might come in here because it's just about impossible to try to lift this netting up. It's just a tangled, tangled mess. So I might try to come in here and top another layer of netting just to give it uh, some support. So that wind just laid them right down yesterday. They were, they were standing nice and tall and that wind came through and did that. So, I mean, that was nothing. If we have hurricane force winds, 
it, it would totally just break them off, uh, probably lay them on the ground, and I don't even think the netting would hold. So I'm gonna try to add a second layer of netting to the zinnias. I'm gonna deadhead. Obviously, there's we've had rain, so I haven't been able to get out here and deadhead um, as regularly as I should have. So today is nice and sunny. The forecast for all weekend is nice and sunny until the storm approaches on Monday. So I've got a few days. Today's Friday. So the, the best thing that you can do for preparedness is to start early. Don't wait. I've lived here my entire life, um, except for the travels that we had when my, Hank was in the Air Force, my husband. But uh, I was born and raised in Panama City, and we moved back here and retired. And so this is where, this is home, and I'm used to the hurricane prep prep and and preparedness and awareness and all that it's it's no joke <laughs> we lived through hurricane michael a few years ago which is a category five and it totally devastated my hometown of panama city and if you've seen footage of that um it it was just it was literally like an f5 tornado came in for two hours three hours it was it was terrible and we were here we rode it out so we got quite a bit um of the wind and we lost several, several huge oak trees. And so, I mean, if a huge oak tree can't even stand against, you know, 155 mile an hour winds, then poor zinnias are never going to make it, right? Um, of course, if we got a hurricane that strong, I could just forget it. You know, these zinnias, even the second layer of netting. But hopefully this is, uh, this storm is not projected to be, but maybe a cat one by the time it gets here. So we're talking like 75, 80 mile an hour winds, but still that's no joke. And I want to be prepared. So as I was saying before, the best thing that you can do is to, to prepare early. Don't wait. Don't wait till it's too late. I can't run out here when they say, oh, guess what? 36 hours or 24 hours, you're going to have a category one. It's too late. I've got other things in the house that I have to prep for. So the garden right now is is priority on the list today to get things prepped for the storm. All right, so now I'm going to move over. Uh, so you can see I've already started cutting Gumphrina down because it's finished. So there's no sense in having that play a part and getting tangled in the netting and maybe uh, causing other plants to have damage. So I'm, I'm cutting that down. I've cut down my tall cosmos that were kind of finished for the season. So I'm laying all those down. I'll get the tractor in here and I'll get all this moved out today. So let's move to a different part of the garden. So fortunately for me, um, a lot of the varieties that I'm growing right now, like I mentioned, are for fall planting. So they're not very tall yet. They're not really a wind hazard because they're really low to the ground. So it, you know, if there is a good time for a storm to come through, this is probably it. If it waits till say October when I've got fields and fields of sunflowers growing and uh, cosmos and tall varieties of things, that could be bad. So oh, let me show you this real quick. This is an example. This is my yarrow and see how low to the ground it's even underneath the net. It just shoots blooms up like this. So I'm good. I'm good there. The celosia it's a little taller. I don't have it netted because typically I don't need to net it. So um, I will probably just let it go and see what happens because it's a quick, quick grower. It uh, anytime I cut it, it shoots up a new, um, a new branch. So not too concerned about the small patch because I do have in the seedling room. I've got more celosia that I've got um, started for fall. So I'm just gonna kind of let that go. Moving into the sunflower patch, I've literally just started succession planting, so they're not very tall at all. They haven't even made it really to the first uh, layer of twine. There's a little bit that's a tiny bit taller, but I'm really not concerned about these, so I'm gonna just let those go, and I think they'll be okay. And they are kind of behind our animal barn, so they're a little bit protected from the wind anyway. This is the wildflower field. Um, it's about 200 foot long and it has just different varieties, cosmos, zinnias. It's not really wildflowers, but it's a mix that I purchased and I mentioned that in, in another video. But, you know, it's not netted. It's just growing wild. I'm just going to let it ride out the storm and um, see what happens. Okay, this is what we refer to as the OG garden. This is the original garden that I started with back in March of 2020. I am concerned the most about it because this is my dahlia patch 
and I have shade cloth and you can see what happened yesterday from just the little uh, thunderstorm that blew through here with 60 mile an hour gust. It totally um, knocked the poles over, knocked some of the shade cloth down. So I think that we're just gonna take the shade cloth down. It's on a cable system. So uh, we'll take it down or either push it all the way up to the poles and tie them down because I don't want it to rip. And then as far as the dahlias go, oh my gosh, I'm really concerned. This is uh, probably the, what I call my cash crop. This is the most important uh, flower that I'm growing right now, simply because as a flower farmer, this flower brings the most money to the business course I want to save the dahlias and in the fall these guys really really thrive so it's a, a huge part of my fall crop as well so I have three rows three 30 foot rows of dahlias growing I think that I will probably pull it up um, with taller stakes and just try to throw some Hortanova netting and um, try to feed some of the taller varieties down into the netting just to give it some extra support I'll probably leave the twine that is in here. It's not fantastic at holding up uh, the, the tall, heavyweight. <laughs> Gosh, a bug just went in my mouth. Um, it's not a fantastic uh, way of holding up the heavyweight. It does help. So I think with that coupled with some netting, uh, a top layer of netting, that they should be okay. So fingers crossed, pray into the good Lord that the dahlias make it. So these are our muscadines. We have two rows of muscadines growing and I'm not really concerned about those. These guys have been here for years and years and years. They are just starting to turn. They're on, they grow, of course, the vine wraps around uh, two cables. So I'm not really concerned about them. I think they will be just fine. And we should have muscadines soon. They're starting to turn. So I'm not gonna do anything with muscadine. So as you can see, I have my work cut out for me. I've got to first and foremost take care of the dahlia patch, uh, then I'll move to the zinnias, and then I'll start um, or finish doing all the cutting down in the field garden out there and uh, get ready for the storm and just pray that it doesn't cause much damage, especially to humans and animals. But our gardens as well. So thanks for tagging along as I explain to you how we prep for a storm. And remember guys, blame where you're planted.